Well, it looks like we've come to the end of this lesson. I probably should have added this onto the last section so you wouldn't have a really short course here, but that's quite all right. So we're here to the skills, and these are things, and maybe I <clears throat> hadn't said it, but let me re-say it again. Skills are things that you should actually go out and practice on your own, spend some time doing. Think of it kind of like homework. Now, am I gonna collect the homework? No, am I gonna grade you? No. Will it make you a better agent? Probably, all right? So take several mortgage brokers to coffee and get to know the products. Mortgage brokers call them products, meaning conventional loan, FHA loan, you know, uh, jumbo loans. A mortgage loan originator in his ling lingo will call them products. We have many different products we can offer, all right? Instead of using the word loan, they like the word product. So you might want to take a mortgage loan originator, a mortgage broker to lunch and talk to them. Now you can do the same thing with banks. You know, there's a banker in there and say, hey, you know, I have a lot of client buyers. Uh, I want to know how you can help. And you guys can go to lunch, go to coffee and actually talk to them and say, what products do you offer? And then what's the best client for that product? And what I'm telling you this is, there are some lenders that will work through a mortgage loan originator or a mortgage broker that like certain clients. And it all speaks to the risk tolerance for that lender. For instance, there is a lender named Carrington and Carrington will do investment grade loans for investors, which are non-owner occupied, which typically are seen as riskier, they will do it with higher loan to value, maybe 100%, but the interest rate may be nine or 10 or 11%. They like that kind of lender because they want that 11% return where somebody with an 850 credit score that's got 20% down, you think that's a safe deal. Well, it pretty much is, but they are going to get the best rate. So Fifth Third may do that guy at 3.25. Which would you rather have? 3.25% return on your money or 11? Well, you'd rather have 11. Well, with 11 comes risk. So there are products that are geared specifically towards certain people. This is the advantage to the mortgage broker and why I would suggest you take a mortgage broker to lunch because they deal with several lenders and it is almost irrelevant, if that's such a word, to the mortgage broker what client you bring. Because one guy they may take to their lender called Carrington because he needs this type of loan and the other client you bring to him they may take to Quicken or United Wholesale Mortgage or Flagstar. So they work with many different lenders and each lender has a specific type. So now you have just one person to deal with is that mortgage broker and let the broker find the best deal for your client rather than you going around and search around each bank. Oh, I got to find a construction loan bank. Oh, I got to find a jumbo loan bank. Well, if you know a mortgage broker, let him do that. So take a client or take a uh, lender or a mortgage broker to lunch or coffee and ask them what products do you have and what's the best customer for that product. Try and find an outlet somewhere to find out what's the going rate. You need to figure out, try and keep current. Now I'm not saying you need to quote it because literally if you're a mortgage broker, they have access where it, it could change three times a day. But if you understand you're in the low threes and <clears throat> for someone with worse credit, you may be in the high threes or the low fours, at least you can get an idea. So when your buyer says, well, I, I need a loan, what do, you, what do you think? Well, I think you're probably gonna be in that four to four and a half, that low fours range, or you're a good uh, risk, so you may get a better loan. And I think the loans now are in the low threes. So you should be cognizant of at least roughly what the rates are because after all, that's the business you're in, okay? So we've talked about lending. It is a very complex process and involves a lot of parties to truthfully disclose their credit history and their obligation. You may have husband and wife. Uh, they may own a small business. 
All of that is going to have to be disclosed. But don't worry, there are many loan types and products available that are going to be geared towards a specific client. Once again, I don't want to beat the dead horse. Uh, Carrington loves self-employed people. If they've got 24 months of bank statements, which now should be easy to pull electronically, and they can show all these income inputs, they can use that as a source of income and maybe not a paycheck, okay? Uh, mortgage fraud is very prevalent. You have to watch out for that. Uh, one of the mortgage frauds that we had mentioned earlier, I forgot to touch on, was those credit repair people. Uh, there is a lot of fraud in that industry. So if you suggest credit repair, make sure you try and find out if they're a reputable person or at least tell your client, hey, mortgage fraud is prevalent. Check it out before you actually jump into a credit repair place. All right. Mortgage fraud is often committed by the owner or the soon to be owner. So don't forget that the person you're talking to could also be the source of that mortgage fraud. They themselves, they could be a straw buyer. They could be lying about whether they're going to live in it. That's occupancy fraud. <clears throat> they may have stolen identity theft. That's going to be really hard to check in my opinion the lender will be able to have much better because they're going to start asking for social security numbers and addresses and let them figure that out, okay? Just remember that mortgage fraud is prevalent and is often uh, perpetrated by the actual person sitting in your office as well as the appraiser and the lender and all those other things, all right? Uh, we're still going to be going. We still got a couple more uh, hours to go in this 30-hour post-licensing course. Don't forget at any time, if you have questions, you can email me, Raymond at realuniversity.com. I look forward to t meeting you and talking to you and answering your questions, all right? So hold on, we're going to come back. We're going to start lesson eight and uh, move into that, and I'm sure we're going to have a lot more fun together.